Welcome to Dialogue, a podcast where we unravel the threads of technology that are shaping the future of our world. We discuss technology and software both on high level and under the hood. My name is Lauri Utila, and I'm the CTO at Finitech, the leading freelancer tech talent agency in Finland. And I'm your host on Dialogue, where I'm interviewing top professionals in their fields. So as a software expert, you might not want to miss this. Welcome to Dialogue. My name is Lauri Utila, and I'm not your host today. And my name is Rami Hirvela, and I am your host today. And today our guest is Lauri Utila. <laughs> it's really, really weird speaking uh, English to a colleague like this. But anyway, I think I think we can manage. So um, let's start with something cutting edge and impactful. Uh, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, well, today we're talking about a hot topic in general in, in IT realm. Uh, we're going to touch artificial intelligence and maybe like a, how to ap- apply it more in the business. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about software as well. Uh, and uh, I, hope, I, I think it's going to be a fun conversation, at least for both of us. And hopefully the audience will also appreciate the, yeah, appreciate the discussion. Sure. Uh, well, a lot of buzzwords going on here, but um, I think you haven't actually talked so much about your like history and past and what you've done so far in the previous episodes. So I think it would be good to give like a brief introduction on who, who you are, how, and uh, especially in the context of AI and and in the context of Rose Flow that we're going to talk about. So uh, what what has led you here? All right. So well. I've been in software development for close to 20 years, uh, 17, 18 years, something like that. And uh, and I've uh, been an entrepreneur for, for that time, run a web development agency before, uh, obviously currently at Finitech um, as a CTO. Uh, but how I got interested in or started with AI was about maybe five, six years ago when the first kind of technical... yeah. AI hype was coming around, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, so a machine learning back then was a big buzzword. And so uh, a bit after big data, yes, yeah. a bit after big data, yes. And uh, uh, but there were already a lot of interesting uh, developments going on, and 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 personally, I wanted to learn what what, what is machine learning, yeah, and how yeah. how does it actually work as a technology, and where you can apply that, and. That's actually when Rose Flow initially got started. So okay. I I did um, was a little bit different uh, a different project back then, but um, um, if you uh, recall uh, this, or you, you probably know the Google's TensorFlow library. Mm, yeah, it's a really yeah, popular. Yeah, actually, we talked about it like a few years back. Yeah, uh, like yeah, the, those did, projects yes. you were doing. Yeah, yeah, and so so TensorFlow was already be- becoming a huge a very popular machine learning library back then and I wanted to learn how to how to use it how to program neural networks with it uh, but unfortunately for me but this is just a personal thing but I'm not a Python developer hmm. but the Ruby developer yeah and I wanted to work on it uh, in the Ruby context and there were no libraries around for uh, tensorflow uh, at the time uh, libraries like Keras and uh, Others which were a little bit more higher level, and you didn't have to program the neural network directly. Uh, so, but I I wanted to like stay in my own own <coughs> own domain and own own programming language world, and uh, so I started working on building a interface yeah. to TensorFlow. And uh, while I didn't actually ever finish the library in in a um, like useful way that it n- never became complete. But I was uh, I learned a lot in terms of uh, um, of Ruby language itself and how the foreign function interface works mm. and how to integrate create C extensions and integrate yeah. with C libraries. So so personally, that was a, like even though nothing really came out of it yeah, as a tool yeah. that I could use, it was a great learning experience. But I was be- able to build like the first TensorFlow uh, tensors in the uh into neural network and like the first layers but uh then um maybe it was a little bit too 
too low level programming for me yeah. uh, in in a sense that it wasn't too interesting mm. i mean the probably the challenge that i or the goal that i achieved or that i learned the ffi and how mm. to how to um um kind of learned how the neural network works yeah. internally and and i wasn't too interested in building the models maybe uh, we're probably going to talk about that uh, a little bit further today but um more like how to apply them so i i, I never saw myself as a like a model designer or developer mm, uh, yeah so it's more like i could say that's like true diy craftsmanship i would say but then like the that like the business impact was a bit too far away from that what you were doing back then yeah would you say yeah. that yeah okay okay but so uh then what sparked your interest to uh generative ai then from the from that point um well as I, as anything any any new technology as a technology enthusiast that interests me and when the large language models came around um uh, at the beginning of the year a lot of a lot of uh, um but started going going around the uh gpt models and uh so it felt like uh, when the open ai had the uh models ready behind an api that was simply uh, simple to use and easy to use i felt that was like a point where the effort that i needed to do to actually harness the power of those mm. models was uh not not uh not too great and I was something like feasible I could invest mm. that little bit of time yeah. there to to actually start working on them as a side project on or of, of my day-to-day -day, uh duties and um uh, uh, so that's how that's how I got it. like back in the back in the AI game in terms of like uh, having an interest on it and, and yeah. actually developing something on it all right yeah so um well now jumping into today uh, as we're talking about rose flow mm. so um can you tell more about it? Uh, what what does, what does it do exactly? Yeah, well, Roseflow is a a um, what I call it is an interaction framework for mm. or a, a framework for building interactions with AI in Ruby. It's it's a Ruby specific library, and uh, actually the um, what enables you to do is, is it's kind of set of a toolbox mm -hmm. of of things that uh, help you build those interactions. Yeah, and uh, uh, because the um, uh, the first my first goal was it to be able to interact with this uh, open AI models mm -hmm. uh, easily uh, and effectively. Uh, at Finitec, we had one use case where we wanted to try it out, how it works, and uh, uh, there was already a, a <clears throat> Ruby library for or Ruby gem for um, for making the API calls and and so forth. So uh, getting started with that was pretty pretty simple. But then I realized that it was just like a really basic wrap around around the API, and uh, I I saw that I oh, I thought that I I probably would be using the models more. Uh, I'd have use cases in other applications, and uh, I didn't want to like build the same thing all over and over again. Mm -hmm. I thought that if yeah. I could abstract a co couple of, uh, let's say the uh, the calling with the AP, the whatever the model that is behind behind the uh, or, or the you are using in Rose Flow, uh, if I could have just a simple API for that, that would be unified across the any provider. Mm -hmm uh then then building building stuff uh later on would be much easier for me and well for yeah. others also as well okay okay yeah so to increase productivity in that sense yeah but we're talking about um the use cases so i think this is this is something that's like really really interesting now for today like what kind of what kind of like business perspectives or or use cases uh have you have you already tried tried with the with the library uh, well, at, we've we've done a couple of experiments. For one, one is obviously at, at uh, uh, Finitec, which is a you could think of it as a sales office for for uh, freelance tech talent. Um, so, so in 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 a lot of the sales and prospecting tasks that we have, mm -hmm. 
we've introduced uh, uh, the use of large language models to mm. um, uh, process unstructured data and get get uh, uh, structured data out of it or or some some evaluation source stuff like that and uh, then then also been experimenting with uh, analyzing like people's profiles and resumes and stuff like that to to be able to um uh because that's that's all if you think about like um resumes in general mm, yeah they are there's no there they are like guidelines how to build one but uh there's no standard structure yeah there's yeah. no standard structure and, and, the, and often you you the uh, data is really unstructured and and previously uh at least for for me personally it seems it seems like a tough problem to solve mm. to have a a um, kind of like a cv interpreter yeah that you could uh um query uh, effectively and, and get good answers out of it but now with the large language models it's much easier to to um let the uh machine do the work yeah so essentially uh because finitech aims to offer the best matching uh freelance projects to say developers designers project managers etc so uh we have basically the option where we can offer a career portal where you can basically set up your own profile and and you know describe your work history and, and your skills in like preset questions but now you're basically as a as a uh, developer you're now free to create uh the the kind of cv or or profile you happen to like or what suits you your ways of working the best mm. and then you can just basically throw out the cv to us and then we can whoosh, take structured data out of that mm. and then based on that data we can uh, we have the means to offer you as a developer the best project mm. there is uh, currently available at the market right yeah 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 okay so it's basically uh, increasing the productivity of the matching process yeah yes yes yeah. that's 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 one thing and I, one um uh maybe we're going to touch more like what, what other uh options or what what are they like the use cases other for, use cases as well for for yeah. not just rose flow but in uh, for la large language products in general or in ai gen mm. in general um if you think of uh business as a uh, it has a few functions usually mm -hmm. like, like yeah, it's a sales and you have to get the customer and you have to convince the customer to buy and then you get the customer then you have some delivery process and then uh a fulfillment uh, uh maybe if you're in in, in uh e-commerce or stuff like that you might mm. have a shipping functions and other customer service and so forth and all of those processes or steps are connected to each other mm -hmm. uh usually they, they are bounded context that then you transfer information to the next phase when you complete uh when you achieve a result in in one of them uh and those are like the places where you either lose money mm -hmm. or make money and uh all those connections are um where you can really uh harness ai yeah. to to like not just ex exponentially scale it but but like uh take it to another planet yeah kind of kind of way uh and uh i think that's 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 exciting that because that's um every business has some kind of a process that has those connections or gaps where uh, opportunities where you you uh make money or lose money kind mm -hmm. of way yeah. and and uh so every every uh every business has a huge huge opportunity to increase their uh productivity in all of those phases and uh, it's just a matter of ingen uh, ingenuity to come up with ways to uh, to optimize or provide more value in those places yeah. and so typically that starts i would imagine in most cases it would start with kind of a process mapping phase and to understand like where what kind of like interfaces there are between uh yeah between yeah. the different stages mm -hmm. of this 
process and then uh, and then start digging up that okay how how could i how could i harness ai in this in this different uh interfaces between the different stages of a set process yeah yeah okay okay yeah um so how um do you have any uh, ideas for monetization uh for rose flow or how could, how could you know if i would now start a new company how could i use it well it's open source so yeah. so uh Personally, I'm not going to make any money from the uh, okay. from the library, but that's okay. Uh, I I believe in open sourcing, yeah. and uh, the one of the main core reasons was that uh, why I built the library uh, was was to I would have liked to find that uh, in in the uh, in GitHub or in Ruby Gems uh, myself. So yeah. that's a, that's a library that I, I I wish that someone else had already built, but they. Yeah, they had hadn't been any uh, yet. So uh, uh, and and obviously because it's open source, when people find it interesting uh, and contribute back to it, mm. they might might bring along features that I I haven't yet had time to do or I haven't even thought of implementing and might be really useful in the future. Yeah. So yeah, okay. Um, so as it's open source and it's you know giving something to the community. Uh, so what kind of um, feedback have you had from it so far i know it's a it's a rather new thing yeah it's, but, it's uh, but, uh, <laughs> so i don't know if this has like if enough time has passed for you to get get like massive amounts of feedback but but about the feedback what kind of feedback have you had so far has have people tried tried it yet or or like what is this what is the status with that uh well we've got i i have a like a discord server for that so as a few people have joined i don't really know if anybody has really used it yet mm -hmm. um at least i haven't gotten bug reports okay. or anything like yeah. that so <laughs> so so the, the the bugs that issues that i uh that that uh are in the library i found them myself so in, yeah. in, in, in a sense using but um but the, i i did introduce or open source the library at the local ruby brigade event Mm -hmm. Here in Helsinki, and uh, okay. uh, and uh, we had a lot of good discussions with the uh, with the participants, and uh, they said to be uh, interested in it in a, in a sense that oh, uh, well, I got a lot of good questions, and uh, people uh, did join the Discord server after that. Yeah. But but uh, the, I think uh, I still need to work on the marketing a little bit if I <laughs> if I if I desire those GitHub stars. Okay. But that's yeah. that's okay for me. Okay. I, I okay. mean, it's a uh, uh, if if people find it useful, great. But if it's uh, the main motivation is yeah. to have a personal tool. Yeah, yeah. What were like the most frequently asked questions about, or uh, like what what the what the key uh, areas of interest in that Ruby Brigade event? Well, they were. I don't think there were any any, any main main threads. They were like mostly technical questions about the particular design choices that I had made, or or. Maybe plans for my uh, for the future. I did announce some com a couple of features that I was going to build on the roadmap. So I got a couple of questions about those, but uh, not nothing specific. Yeah, yeah. Did you talk about the uh, the development process? How was the development process like? Were there like what was the starting point? Uh, what kind of challenges you might have faced uh, during the development process? How did it go? Well, the, I actually started the develop the development of the library maybe on February this year, uh -huh. um, or at least I started thinking about it, and, and uh, then took me probably like uh, one one or two weeks to put it together. The the core core functionality that I want, wanted to have. So, um, and I was uh, again the power of open source came in. I, there were a couple of couple of um, existing Ruby gems that I uh, mm -hmm. that were well tested and uh, widely used already that brought me uh, some functionality that I didn't have to develop myself for example mm -hmm. the whole whole um, interaction or executing running interactions and actions and how you can um, have a, a context that's passed along mm -hmm. along the way and 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 the, the control flow of that. Mm. Uh, so uh, there was a the great gem called Light Service that yeah. uh, uh, I thought of that I would have to write something like that, but luckily found that and 
Uh, I, I remember that I, I have been using it before also in, in my Rails development work, but uh, uh, that kind of sped up the development yeah, quite okay. a bit. So mostly, mostly was um, uh, like trying to figure out what do you want to put into that uh, um, and uh, scoping it correctly so that because I wanted to have, uh, I want the library to be m fairly abstract in, in mm -hmm. a sense that um, uh, it does not depend on any particular provider like mm. OpenAI. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's the more b best supported right now on, on that platform. But uh, I've tried to abstract it so that you could plug in Azure or AWS mm -hmm. when they have yeah, yeah. launched so their foundation model like general sense. availability or or any other um i'm working now on the how, like how to use the inference apis or how to use the models in in hugging face for example so that they wouldn't you wouldn't have to be bound to a particular provider yeah and uh so obviously that was a bit of a iterative process of figuring yeah. out what's going to be the uh, scope of the library and how do you how as a programmer would i want to interact with yeah. it were there like any definite like death valleys in the process like okay now sort of like okay now i'm hitting a wall kind of phases or was it like like the was the process like pretty clear but they were yeah, just you know think, yeah, like for example the scoping they were like just things where you had to you know scratch your head a bit but yeah well i, th I think it was easier than the first time around when i when i did write the uh, tensorflow Bits. That that was mm. that was oh, really yeah. like a death valley, okay. a death valley <laughs> experience. <laughs> uh, I've never been a C programmer, so yeah. so well, I could read the the header files to understand how the library works, but uh, or, or how to call it. But but then um, there were a lot of times where where I was really really banging my head against the <laughs> keyboard. And what do you yeah. like? Finally, get. Something like something very tiny to work in, though that that was a yeah. bit of a eureka moment. Though. Yeah. Okay. So it's good that you've already had you already at that phase. You had like basically graduated from the elementary school of yeah. AI, <laughs> yes. and now you're getting to the real things. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, okay. Um, what else? You uh, talk about learnings, uh, the challenges. Um, I think. With, like from different angles, we already touched like the, the the inspiration part, but I think we could still like dive a bit deeper there. Like what 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 have been like the main inspirations? Is it, is it more like from the impact side, or was it just you know for, for the um, that, okay, I want to create a tool for myself uh, and I want to do it with, with Ruby, or how how would you how would you describe that? Well, that's well, mm, kind of a combination of all of those three. Mm -hmm. Uh, but mainly, mainly, um, mainly it's maybe the, uh, impact that you can have, uh, mm. with, uh, all that the artificial intelligence will have mm. on, on, uh, us, what it's having it right now and yeah. what it's going to have the next week and the next month and the next year and the next decade. Uh, and, and to be able to participate in that, um, using the tools that I love to use. So I, I really like working with Ruby because uh, mm. it is a programming language yeah. uh, maximized for developer happiness. And it's really yeah. Yeah. really a, like a joy, joy to work with. And uh, uh, so I kind of needed the tool to be the best productive that mm. I can be. Uh, and it didn't seem like a too big of a challenge to or time investment to to develop the library uh, because for example the language models like the open ai's gpt models they are behind any simple http http api and just you can call and you can ha have to just handle the response and but that's that's like where i realized it's more it's not too much about the models themselves uh, mm. but how you how you uh, how you structure the or how you integrate the models into whatever uh, workflow or business process or you are working on or improving. Mm -hmm. uh, and because the open AI 
models, for example, they are just a black box. Mm. You put an input, then you get an output. Yeah, uh, you don't have to. You don't have too much of a say. Uh, what's going to be the output? Well, there, yeah. there are. You can fine tune some of the models, and also if you set up your own models, you can ov- obviously fine tune them. But uh, they're still going to be fairly black boxes, and mm. actually just a uh, one piece of the whole workflow. Yeah. And that's why I call the it's it's a it's an interaction framework because yeah. usually you have to get some data from somewhere, maybe process it somehow before and, and before composing the prompt. Yeah, and then then when you get the prompt back, you have to usually make uh, you usually want to data to end somewhere, yeah, yeah. whether it's the next next exactly. system or the, yeah. the user uh, and and so forth. So. Uh, that's that's like the core uh core idea of the library to make building those easy and uh but coming back to the original one the, the business impact <clears throat> or impact yeah. in general may, yeah. may, well my my personal personal interest is uh probably most in business business side of things or mm. any 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 business that i'm involved in uh and can develop further to be uh more productive yeah more value to customer and uh, so forth. So that's probably where I'm going to spend my exactly. time on. Most. Actually, this takes us like quite nice. This is the next question that I was thinking. That's like, um, who could benefit this? Like, what are the what are, what are the roles or what kind of people are in, are in? What kind of roles are those people in who would most mostly benefit from this one? Is it is it more like actually <laughs> some with people like you who know their way around Ruby? Mm-hmm. And they have like business problems uh, that they can impact, like like clo- close enough to them, so mm. that they can they have basically the the mandate to work on those business problems, and they are uh, good with Ruby. Mm-hmm. So is it is it those kind of people? What kind of what is the sort of target group uh, for this tool? Uh, for target group is it's yeah I, I I'd say it's probably. Regular use uh, Ruby developers. Any yeah. developer who's working on on a Ruby project or Rails project, um, it's uh, at it's so still so young uh, library that uh, I mean, it for for a developer, uh, not probably too difficult to understand and get into it. But mm-hmm. uh, but if you would. Um, Let's say you are not a developer and you, but you have some technical skills mm. already, and you wanted to experiment with a, a AI. Uh, I think the more appropriate right now w- would be probably like the uh, Langchain AI mm. in in Python ecosystem, yeah. where where and there's a lot of a lot of tutorials on how to do certain thing in five or ten lines of code by using Langchain, yeah. and and uh, uh, that would be probably uh so so for rose flow it's still the core or like a developer kind of person but um let's see what what the future brings well i mean it already has a cli that you can chat in your terminal if you want with the mm. ai and and all the interactions that you develop are uh executable in terminal so you could uh, i haven't built the feature yet but you, you could Pass a file from your file system. Maybe that's yeah. a PDF to an interactor who, which, which will uh, process the PDF into text form, and then you can yeah. ask questions from oh. it. So, right. so building that uh, kind of uh, interaction is obviously already possible, and uh, might be something that's going to be a, like a plugin or mm. or uh, in the library later on. So okay. All right. All right. Kind of lowering the barrier of of. Um, interaction with the ai for mm. for less technical people yeah yeah do you have like those uh examples somewhere uh in the in their discord server or uh you or in github or yes the the uh, main main uh rose flow uh, repo it will have um i think i'm going to release at least a couple of those uh like fully fledged out examples of how to build mm-hmm. the interaction one that is uh, close to completion is like a a, a like a, um, GitHub repo mm-hmm. 
discussion thing. Yeah. So so you feed it the uh, URL of a GitHub repo. It'll it will then uh, uh, load the repo, the files, make embeddings out of it, and then you can start querying, ask, asking questions about the code base in the repo. Mm-hmm. And maybe there's something uh, like I mentioned, like a document query or like chat with your PDF kind of thing. Yeah, would be would be another good uh, good example that I could put together. So so people see how 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 you how I would develop uh, those interactions with Roseflow, and, and and they can either follow the same way, or it, it uh, or then uh, if, if if I don't have a a uh, suitable tool for uh, mm-hmm. or integration ready for that, they can just build themselves. And, yeah, yeah. But they like uh, we talked about Langchain as well. So what are like the currently um, like the, the I wouldn't say I would actually say differentiators, but um, what other options do people have at the moment, or developers have at the moment, uh, like which are similar to Roseflow? I think the Langchain is probably the best example. I don't yeah. really know of any other um, that would be like really popular. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm sure there are out there. Yeah, yeah. Tools like Roseflow and Langchain in in other other programming ecosystems as well. But uh, yeah, it's actually really interesting because now it's what the fifteenth mm-hmm. uh, of June, twenty three. So I'm really, really <laughs> well. I couldn't say worried, but let, well, let's in lack of a better word, let, yes, let, let's use worried about how this will, how all this conversation will look like. Let's say in a year. So will it will it be like ridiculous? What were those guys thinking? Or like, oh wow, we were like so so much behind, like uh, behind the whole AI schedule already a year ago. Or, yeah, no, I don't. I don't know. It's probably going to be like a good. We're going. We might look at the good snapshot later and, and uh, like think of uh, the. This is kind of the ancient history of, <laughs> of, of AI tool development. Exactly. But, uh, exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but. Uh, well, talking about future plans, um, what, what are the best ways to like for the community uh, to uh, contribute to the project at the moment? Well, that would be just uh, downloading the repo, visiting roseflow.ai, and, and mm-hmm. checking out the documentation, and uh, and uh, then start building something. I mean, it's if if you're a Ruby developer, I, I think you. Um, uh, you should check it out at least in the sense that you get a uh, um, understanding on on what it can do and and maybe even if you don't use it, it might give you some ideas on how to yeah how yeah. to how to build uh, uh, stuff around AI in your projects yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, so I that that's probably the best way. I mean the Discord server is also uh, up and running, so if you want to ask questions about it when you get started and don't know what the Laura yeah. was thinking here, and then yeah, we'll reach yeah. me there. Okay, well, now that we uh, got into uh, future plans, mm. I think this might be like a Pandora's box question. But uh, but how do you see? Like, there's been quite a lot of lot of uh, different kinds of views regarding the future of generative AI. What's what's like your take on the the, the future of generative AI? Well, what do, how, how would you how would you describe it from your point of view? Well, maybe maybe like AI in general, uh, not just generative. Yeah, but, actually, uh, yeah, that's a yeah, good, um, good one. There was actually a really uh, interesting uh, interview uh, mm-hmm. with, uh, uh, or discussion between Stephen Bartlett and uh, Mo Gavdat, who was the uh, who used to be the uh, I think chief business officer for Google, and. Uh, so they were talking about the future and why. And uh, Mo was really, really. Um, he felt like he, he had to he had to warn people of of uh, <clears throat> uh, the potential uh, or the different scenarios mm. of of where where AI development can take us, and and. Uh, uh, he gave he gave a good, like a good example. If you can think of uh, Albert Einstein, for example, mm-hmm. he was pretty smart, you'd say. 
Yeah, one might say. Yeah, uh, he had an IQ of 165, I think, or something like that. And if if um, uh, Chat GPT Chat GPT four has an IQ of 150, so it's how, almost how, how at an Einstein level. Yeah, how how is that measured? I, I think it's probably well. That's like an estimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, it's not like a definite. Yeah, I don't know if the model really has an IQ yeah, assigned yeah. to it, but yeah, but yeah. the uh, output that it generates uh, resembles that of a person yeah. with that that level of intelligence. And uh, so, if if we have already machines that are uh, or software that is capable mm -hmm. of of producing almost Einstein level uh, thought or, mm. or, or or output um, mm. yeah I would say output would be actually yeah better, that's a, better that's better still here, probably yeah. the yeah. probably the right word so uh, uh, so but if we're already there mm. what if it's 10 times smarter yeah exactly and and we might even uh, so that's that's already something that we, we cannot even like comprehend mm. because if you yeah. If you uh, ask an average person, oh, what do you think about Einstein's theories? Yeah, they probably don't understand them really well. And if uh, what, what is average IQ? Is it probably ninety or ninety-five or something like that? Yeah, the whole world. And and if Einstein's Einstein was less twice as smarter than <laughs> than the average person, and yeah. now we have Chat GPT, which is already almost the Einstein level. When it zooms past that, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's going to be uh, uh, interesting, let's say. Yeah, yeah. So some kind of governance will be will be needed, uh, especially when we're thinking about potential cases for misuse, for example. Yeah. Or, well. Yes. Um, yes and no. Uh, um, this is kind of I haven't really formulated my like I can put a uh, a. a a to uh, structure thought on this, but I I, I think um, personally I think because I believe in open source, for example, mm. and for a free market and competition, and uh, um, so I believe that we shouldn't regulate AI mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. But the, on the other hand, there you might want to have some kind of um, guardrails on the use mm. of the AI. Yeah. Now, how what, what would that look like? That I can't answer yet, but but that's something that we probably have to think. But uh, uh, um, there was this letter from like really prominent people asking asking the world to stop the AI development for mm. six months so we can figure <laughs> out what's going on. Um, I think the uh, idea was. Uh, Respectable. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they had a good reasoning behind it, but it's just like like Mr. Gavdat said that it's uh, if you're realist, it's not possible in this world. Yeah. You can't tell everyone to just stop it and yeah. and uh, uh, and like adhere to that uh, yeah. that uh, ask or wish from from uh, world leaders or, or thought leaders. So, I think only thing we can do is to have really good intentions when developing mm. AI, yeah, and then then um, hope that we as humans self regulate ourselves. Mm. That's a quite a tall ask, uh, but uh, yeah. but uh, <clears throat> but I, I I think that's the the best best way to go forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually very interesting how how like. This specific six-month window of stopping all AI development, I understand it from the point of view that, of course, there has to be some sort of time frame to sort of think, be like, hold on, we, we need to understand this first before we can go mm. further down the road. But but like a like a fixed six-month window sounds like ah oh, well, just something. Let's uh, let's stop it for six months, okay, and then. We'll continue from that, but that, that doesn't sound that, that sounds a bit, I don't know, weird to my ears. 
but the, but the idea is good. Like, just hold on. We need to understand this first. Good, good. Uh, you were talking about the um, these guys at Google talking about uh, the uh, the future of AI. I think we should actually uh, include that link in the uh, uh, in the description of the podcast. Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah. it was a it was a. Uh... It was a good serious discussion. Um, it wasn't anything like total doom and gloom, <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, it was it was. A, uh, I think it's worthwhile for for anybody to who's who's interested in AI. Well, maybe maybe everybody in general to to um, understand the implications that this um, intelligence that's massively beyond our capabilities yeah soon yeah yeah well what it will mean to the world uh and um but uh, there was like one well, maybe maybe i can uh spell uh dispel one of the fears that i don't think we're going to have the any any skynet or mm -hmm. the ai taking uh or um Taking over the world and enslaving the humanity—that's like the, uh, uh, like Mr. Gavard said. That's really probability is probably going to be zero yeah, for that, yeah. because there are many preceding scenarios where humans are involved mm. with the AI. Exactly. That either will lead to bad things or better things, or so. Um, but. Uh, that, that episode was really, really good, and, and uh, um, well, one of the interesting ones that uh, I'm not going to spoil it too much, but uh, but uh, one interesting observation from actually wasn't uh, Mr. Gardner, but uh, but he uh, some other guy who had uh, hypothesized that uh, if the AI gets smart enough, quickly enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and it will actually become a, a, a sentient being or mm. like a uh, intelligence cat that can uh, is conscious of itself and and can make decisions and think of, think of have original thoughts and so forth. If its uh, intelligence grows quickly enough, mm. they might ignore us. Yeah, they might think of us us like uh, we think of insects or yeah exactly small things and it's just a part of a part of this uh universe or environment that i am living in and yeah yeah and uh exactly not yeah not like blockers per se but like more like oh okay well it's just part of the environment and it's uh it's making this not so nice noise ah okay <laughs> that, that, that kind of yeah that kind of uh, perspective. So if we don't annoy them, yeah, we're going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so we need to hire more kill switch, <laughs> kill switch engineers. Okay, no. Uh, but anyway, well, this was a uh, still quite a bit doom and gloom kind of ending. Uh, but I think this is actually a good um, a good point to conclude. Well, maybe the one the one of the positive or note is that okay. Is let's that, end with a positive note. Uh, the positive note that the uh, as Gavrat said that. Uh, uh, if we play this right as a humanity, um, and I, as I described earlier, the potential that you have, for example, just a business, the mm -hmm. different gaps or process phases where you can increase the uh, productivity or the value created mm. exponentially, uh, there can be a lot of positive things coming out of this. Uh, maybe mostly in, uh, well, first in economic sense, but if if that's economically beneficial for the whole world, mm. that will usually lead better uh, social development, mm. and 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 then uh, there's a lot of good um, good potential scenarios as well. But we have to maybe tread carefully to reach those. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, uh, reach those uh, scenarios. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much. And I, and I, think's, I think it's uh, time to conclude the episode, uh, as well as the season one for Dialogue. We're currently planning uh, season two for the podcast with a bit new themes, probably. And I will be guiding you guys towards the new season. But thank you so much. 
Thanks.